seven king of the game I believe in you that's what he'll say nice and kind leading cobalt ice he's a blue cute and deadly little guy seeing through the fog old gods he slay go seven 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 Seven king of the game I believe in you that's what he'll say nice and kind leading cobalt ice he's a blue cute and deadly little guy seeing through the fog old gods he slay go seven 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 Seven king of the game I believe in you that's what he'll say nice and kind leading cobalt ice he's a blue cute and deadly little guy seeing through the fog old gods he slay go seven 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 hello 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 the penguin might be a different size, might be in a different spot for some reason. Uh, when I turned off the penguin for the podcast, it completely reset all of the sizing. So the penguin was like filling up the whole screen. Uh, so once we hop into a game, I will probably be moving the penguin around a little bit. <laughs> it's going to be a wild day. Let me look up an old video, see where I had the penguin before. That's like the smart thing to do. Uh, let's do one with the... Where were you, penguin? About the same spot. I can't quite tell if they're the same size, though. There, it's about right. <laughs> You're proud to report your current record six to five with no draws yet. That's great. Hello, Ash. Hello. Howdy, howdy. Say howdy in chat. Howdy. Play giving. Gaming, yeah. Let me just give out my free membership gifts for the month. Give you guys some emotes. Enjoy, enjoy. There you go. Hola. They only let me do ten. If I could, I'd just give one everyone give uh, one to everyone so you could use the emotes. You got the Sonya luck moment. <laughs> you got a question, Mega Man? What's your question? I know. Well, the 10 get handed out for free every month, so hopefully you'll get one eventually. It's a $1 value. <laughs> I, unfortunately, I cannot target them. It's always random. You've heard through some vines that people want to revamp Tier 2 Fog. But Grit is the person I've been pushing to be put into Tier 2. 
<laughs> Grit's like the only... Kindle can sometimes do tier 2. Or we could bring in like dual strike Sonya and then she'd probably be tier 2. But that's... That's a whole different ball game. Hey, Red Halo. Von Bolt tier 2, let's go. Or just remove tier 2 altogether. I want grit in tier 2 fog, yeah. Exactly, Grit's already mostly tier 2 anyway. Just make him officially tier 2. You're thinking of getting into advanced words by web, but you're afraid of your nostalgia strats will get shut down. Your nostalgia strats will 100% get shut down. I I'm sad to say. Uh, the, the games themselves, the campaigns, they do not prepare you very well for competitive. It's a new old Go7 game. <laughs> Remove all tiers. They have their weaknesses and strengths. Now, the tiers are very good for the game. They're very good for the game. Yeah, now Grit is absolutely destroyed in tier 1. He really struggles in tier 2, but he can get some stuff done. I've played Grit versus Max a couple times in Fog, and it is a doable matchup. Grit versus Eagle, I think, is practically impossible, but <laughs> that's okay. I, I view it more as giving Fog its version of standard Sammy, where like specialists play that character, but for most maps, they're just um, the uh, the underdog. Tier zero CEOs should not be playable because tier, tier zero just means ban list. Unless you're saying that there should be no ban CEOs, period. I mean, you can play them, of course, in Z games and the, and the like, but they're kind of unbounceable for Global League for their specific modes. I mean, comp by some or comp by sometimes gets put into like high funds, and Sturm can make it into fog and high funds. But like Hachi, Hachi's Hachi. Yeah, I'm fine with Jugger and Flak being playable. I mean, they, they seem to be fine in Live League. But... <laughs> Give Jess her vehicle the 120% offense. No, I don't think that's a needed... Thing. That makes her too much like Max. Tier 4 is a little overcrowded, though. But so is Tier 3. <laughs> Losing Fog. Okay. So this is from my recent stint into returning to Global League. I've been playing in high funds. The goal is to play through high funds, get high enough so that uh, a true boss can fight me again. Because we've only had one game in high funds in a tournament uh, where I was Sammy and he was Andy, and I won that game. But uh, I, I want to give him another shot at redemption because he's the top of high funds. Either that or I'll, I'll just crush him again. Um, <laughs> but after, after that game, I will move back into Fog of War and we will get to see the return of the king and see how many points I can scoop up. Or get crushed by the new by the new blood. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see. But this is a game from my high funds climb, the very first one that finished, and I was very happy. 
to be able to choose Sturm. As people know, I love playing Sturm, and I also love Sturm mirrors. Uh, <laughs> I think someone's called it a pillow fight. I don't think my Sturm games tend to be pillow fights. I like to leverage that defense to be extra aggressive, usually. But there's, there's some pillow fighting going on in this game. We'll, we'll see how it goes. My, my goal is going to be to get a recon from over here to contest these cities and get an economic edge over there at the same time. The recon does help contest the comm tower. And I'm going to try and do it in a way that gives me tempo so that I don't get too pressured on the other side. I want to try and get as many infantry out on this one base side as possible. So you'll see fast recon. I want to get the recon before my opponent gets their recon. And this is kind of forcing a tank on the one base side, which I'm very happy about because look at all of these properties that the one base side is pretty much required to, to go for captures. I mean, this infantry, these infantry can walk over and like get this capture chain and stuff. Um, but there's still a lot that this is responsible for, including the comm tower. So uh, making it so there's one less infantry on the field on this side is very, uh, very good news for me. But of course, the recon doesn't actually like beat up a tank i mean this is a sturm fight so the recon can take one tank hit and be totally fine but uh it's not gonna like scare off this tank so there's a few choices for where you want to go with the positioning here i decided to go here so that i would have as many uh, uh options for where i want to hit the infantry from when it goes for the capture on this city i can hit from here here or here uh, and then still have the option, if I want to, to just zoom over to the other side of the map and start harassing the double base. Although harassing the double base isn't as good, of course, because they don't have quite that hurt for the infantry count. Since they can build like a tank and an infantry in response. So they still get uh, infantry, unlike on the one base side where they build a tank and that, that immediately cuts off their infantry count. Pretty uh, seriously. So I'm doing the classic recon tank thing. So the idea is... Go for the capture, my recon hits, the tank hits my recon, and then my tank can hit their tank. So I'm just like starting a vehicle fight with my recon and getting in the first swing there to try and get an economic edge by uh, denying the city. But a fun fact is that uh, without comm towers, maybe even with comm towers, a, re uh, a Sturm's recon can't actually stop a capture. So that's the other thing that the tank helps me with. Uh, you won't... <laughs> At least I think it, it might be a roll, but I'm pretty sure you hit them, and if they just continue capturing, you won't be able to stop them on the, the following turn. You just make them extend it by, by one turn. But if you have any other follow-up hit, then you can stop it. So that's the other roll that the tank fulfills here. And I just really want to keep the pressure on this side so that my own one base side can get as many infantry out into the world as possible. Um, and you can see that from this base, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can build a recon here to interrupt this capture. And I was really hoping the saucy cells wouldn't quite see that, but uh, <laughs> we do. So I have my own recon to deal with over here. And I was surprised the saucy cells did not actually build a tank with that other money. Like I can understand wanting to build another infantry on this front because three infantry while one's about to be attacked is definitely not enough for all of the captures that this one side, of, one base side is far. But floating the cash here seems a little weird to me. Um, because this, I mean, I guess this infantry does get to help out with the one base and its captures, but it does miss out on the same kind of aggression that uh, I have over here with tank recon. So I can just kind of answer this with a single tank and not be too hurt. So here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna attack from this side so that it's not uh, easy. For saucy cells to or I mean it's impossible for saucy cells to, to trap in the recon or anything funny like that like if I attack from up here with the recon then my tank doesn't actually cover my recon he can just kind of smack it without me having any real threat on it um, if I attack over from over here then this tank can strike from the forest and it has a nice defensive terrain and it's not it's not really a great attack for me to attack into it it's a fine attack so here it forces the tank to attack from the plains uh, another reason why you wouldn't want to attack from over here is that you you are going to be fighting inside the tank 
uh, reinforcement range from this base. But here, if the tank attacks from over here, over here, it's going to be just barely outside of the tank reinforcement range. And uh, I can probably get away with the attack. Here we just pump out some infantry. I went for the airport really quickly because I'd like to start getting a nice unit count advantage and put more pressure on this base. So I'm going to try and have it to be forced to be building tanks to fight me with the ground units and also have to get anti-air to deal with the air units. And then maybe I can just out unit comp it, take it out, uh, either get a double comm tower advantage or just take the lab and win the game. Because it's just a single lab race or lab map. Okay, so here Saucy Cells is going to step off of the city with the capture and smack my recon. I'm very happy with that. It's very safe for the tank because I'm, I mean, I'm probably not going to attack it with my tank. But um, at the same time, value-wise, this is huge for me because that delays this capture a very long time. Every turn that this gets delayed is 2,000 less value uh, as well as any further captures that this inventory might have gone for. So... That immediately pays for half of a recon, such as the way of the Sturm fights. As you can see, the Sturm recon can take the hit from a Sturm tank and be pretty happy with its life. And the, the one base side for my opponent here is definitely very hurt infantry wise. Uh, all fronts that the infantry are going towards, they don't really have a spare. So, like, this interrupt is basically permanent. And then my opponent's recon came down here and it's threatening a whole bunch of different sides. I wanted to make sure my infantry could choose to either go for this capture or this capture, depending on where this recon goes. And then depending on where, uh, on how that all plays out, this infantry will either be going over for this capture or it will just go up to get this nice capture chain. So I want to make sure that they've got as many options as, as possible. Same with like this guy. He's got so many options for where he wants to capture from or, or capture. You can go for this property, this property, this property or the comm tower. I'm going to decide to go for the comm tower and the city with this infantry so that this recon's forced to interrupt only one of these and have to do it from the road. Here you'll see the recon just doesn't quite reach me over there. And I want to have my tank in a nice centralized uh, spot that, that annoys this infantry from potentially trying to go for the center or um, walking towards this comm tower. So there we go. And I'm just going to run back and start healing this guy up because at 5 health I'm not quite strong enough to do some really nice interrupts or, or block tank strikes for instance. So it's time to get healed up a bit. Uh, the transport copter is worth it for, for one city, but you don't necessarily want to get it out quickly. Later on, when you have some more spare cash, you can do it. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for me to do right away. Well, if I interrupt the top city with my recon, my recon will just die because the tank will just get like a free hit against it. And I'll only do one damage most likely, which means that as soon as it's finished, it'll, it'll delay the city by one turn, but then once the city is finished, the infantry will heal back up to full, so I don't get that like extended damage to the economy like I do against this guy. Like If, if you interrupt down to 7, uh, they finish their capture eventually, and then they heal up to 9, which is not enough to get an another like 2 turn cap. Yeah, I base skip for the copter, because I want to get the tempo pressure. And uh, I basically get from this base because it's the least valuable one to build an infantry from right now. So I could have not base skipped and gone for a transport copter, but it'd be just much slower. Okay. So I have some options on how I want to deal with this tank. If I want to, I can try and... Uh, I can trap it in here, but I don't. I decide it's not that great. I can go like infantry here, recon here, tank here, and then it just sits on my city and attacks me and does as I 
like build stuff up to kill it. So instead, I'm just going to be like, whatever, you hit my infantry, I'll just keep capping here. The tank's way off on the side of the map. It doesn't really matter. I'll just go fight elsewhere. And here, I'm going to do that, that thing that I wanted to avoid my opponent being able to do, attacking from the forest onto a recon. Because it makes this tank kind of awkward. Uh, and we've got our tank chain to help defend this. And the copter goes straight up. This is to try and lure this anti-air into moving around this way to, to face with this copter. And then I can just front shift way over here and deal with this like tank fight. As well as giving me the, me some uh, more control over this commentary area. Because this is my opponent's only infantry for this, this region. And it's definitely eyeing that comm tower because the fighting has begun. As such, I'm going to just move this recon over here. Be ready to interrupt over uh, this potential uh, capture with a pretty cheap unit. As well as having the option to zoom up here and uh, hit this capture. Okay. You can it's, it's eight seven from planes on the forest. It's almost just an even trade. And I have a city I can immediately run to for repairs. If I want to, or I can just go for two tank decks to try and get the the win in the exchange. So this is the kind of situation you really don't want to get stuck in, where you have no backup infantry in range to go for any of the captures in the region, and I just have a ton of units that can attack that infantry. Yeah, debatably, I shouldn't even go for this attack. It like delays the the capture, but okay. This is a, a mistake I do right right here. I do a misclick. I think I'm playing on the phone. <laughs> I actually I accidentally attacked the tank, which could potentially make it so this tank could kill my recon, and this guy can get away. And if that guy gets away then the anti-air can stand on the city and kill my copter. So it could be pretty bad. It wouldn't be like the end of the world because it would still be pretty overextended on my double my double base side, but it would be not great because I'd much prefer to be in the situation where uh, the anti-air can't reach my copter. And this is where the, uh, the unit composition win comes in very handy. An anti-air got built over here. I don't think that was necessarily needed, but it's not going to really like fighting against all these tanks. So these tanks miss out on their reinforcements. Same with like this being an anti-air instead of a tank. Um, it means that the tank count over here is a little bit, a little bit weaker. But I have now a comm tower advantage. And my opponent is a uh, comm tower is very interruptible. It doesn't have anything to join cap, and it doesn't really have any follow up to uh, to capture it if this guy fails. Okay, so very slow uh, retreat here. I'm not going to attack into that. This guy artillery covering it, and it's in double base range. So I'm going to just skedaddle. Uh, it does look like my opponent is starting to build up a death ball, which as Sturm, I'm not scared of at all because you can always just, uh, you know, drop a nuke on it. I'm going to attack this anti-air. It's not necessarily the, the best play. Might be better to just go after the tank on the uh, the road and just rely on that to protect the copter. My recons are just going to go do recon stuff and harass these remaining infantry in the region. It slows down like the capture on this city and helps protect this this capture. But more importantly, it's going to really limit the number of infantry that could ever be available to go for this comm tower as I start to. 
uh, go for it myself. And now I need to start preparing for the oncoming push because the uh, the plan I'm suspecting my opponent's going to do is build up a death ball and just try and take this comm tower, go for a comm tower trade. So we're going to go for a nice beefy Neo tank. It also works as a magnet, I do believe. If my opponent was able to get uh, the normal power. Attacking over here is probably a mistake because I do have a lot of backup to, to help protect these tanks. I've got two copters in range, two more tanks. So I imagine my opponent is just trying to distract my army so I don't come over here and try and fight the death ball off. We do have the bomber in response to the Neo tank, which is fine. There's Fred. Uh, so here I'm just going to try and do a lot of harass, uh, harassing of these units and then start the comm tower capture because that's a very big threat. We'll just do a join cap to secure this city. And then once the city's uh, finished, then I can just walk over and take this one because I'm Sturm and we got that Sturm movement. You think moving over here, I'm just trying to make it so it's not very easy for my opponent to block all of the tiles that my Neo tank can, can move through with like infantry and stuff, which is definitely dangerous. It, you might often think that having heavy terrain by your base will make your base more defensible, but really it makes you very vulnerable because the units that you build from the base are what really defends it. And so having these uh, choke points that can then block off your defending units from hitting stuff like artillery and the like uh, can be very bad. But yeah, I'm going to build a fighter, of course, to deal with the bomber. I could also just ignore the bomber or just try and get some anti-air, but... This does also bring in some very fast reinforcements to the one base side. And again, I'm not very scared about the death ball just because it's a stern mirror. And it's very hard to magnet uh, away from a death ball. We got our classic <laughs> stern rolls. The one health tank holds. There we go. Uh, may, uh, if my opponent didn't, didn't bring the bomber quite so far down, then there could have been an attempt at building a magnet. But like this is a really nasty meteor that's lined up here. It hits pretty much everything over here, all but this tank. You know, if both captures hits the bomber. So I'll be willing to do very large sacrifices to uh, to get it. Deadly. There was one damage dealt to this guy, so can't quite get the uh, double comm tower this turn. But <laughs> classic <laughs> Sturm sacrifices. The, the copter doesn't die, but there's there's more charge on the map to go for. So I'll drop the Meteor Strike. I could maybe go in with the tank first to get a little bit more charge. But I enjoy my extra stats. I just want to make sure that my opponent doesn't have any healthy units over here. I'm not really too worried about injured units attacking my Neo tank. If the bomber goes for it, my fighter will just finish it off. The anti-air goes after one of these copters. I've got all these tanks. I got the Neo tank to deal with it. At this point, it's basically GG. I've got the uh, the mega placed here to be a magnet. Yeah, I like that. That does three damage, and then the bomber gets killed off for it. It's it's rough. Uh, it looks like. 
my opponent's trying to get the super. Just fine. The super does do more damage, but usually... In this case, my the normal power was very nice, but usually what I value more with the Sturm powers is that plus 10, plus 10 stats. As you can see, it's, it's very nice. Uh, but yeah, the magnet does its job. Such as the Mega Tank buy. And there's our first game in high funds. A stir mirror. Nice and aggressive. A little bit lower in the recon count than you would usually expect. I've only got three recons in this game. No, two recons. Two recons. And my opponent had one. You usually expect more than that as they can speed across the map uh, very quickly. But there was very close uh, base distances, which... Kind of limited their viability a tiny bit. <laughs> Good old Sturm versus Sturm. One of my... Probably my favorite, favorite mirror. Even if not everyone loves it. An expensive war machine reduced to a magnet for a giant rock. That's that's what you do. That's what you do. Yeah, I prefer the Sturm normal power. Especially at the higher levels. Uh, people can always magnet your, your super. Sturm is very fun to play, uh, but he can be very annoying to play against because of the perfect movement combined with increased defense. But if you get a chance, I would highly recommend playing playing as Sturm. A lot of fun. Yeah, you pretty much only super if it's going to give you kills and the like. If it if it if the extra damage really matters. Yeah, more high funds. More go seven high funds. Here we've got Akai Ha Tofake playing Kindle against me playing Rachel. I, I, I liked Rachel on this map because the uh, this double base here I I figured the fighting is going to start leeching down into the middle so it's going to be a lot of units coming in here but the infantry are going to have a really long walk so the missiles will just start landing over here because the infantry will be trying to capture in the middle and then the, the units are going to build from these bases you know, just kind of get a big old missile fest all heading in the center And that's that's why I went with Rachel. Uh, and I wanted to go. I had two games on this map, and I wanted to go Rachel in both of them. But um, uh, oh my gosh, how do you say his name? Is it J Talk Win? Told me that he was going Rachel, and I didn't want to do a mirror match, so I chose Kindle. So. What, what ends up happening is I play Rachel against Kindle in this, and then in the other game, I'm Kindle against Rachel. J Talk win. Aha. <laughs> J Talk win. <laughs> Will Lucky Last be used? We'll find out. This is the first time I've, I've played on this map. I'm going to try... I, I really like utilizing Rachel's day-to-day. -day. I think it's a lot stronger than uh, a lot of people give it credit for. And I'm also going to go about this game very differently than JTalk Win does. Who, uh... When he was playing... Uh... 
there was a lot of artillery defenses against Kindle, which I think are very good. And if I go back, if I ever do this again, I might use them. I'm going to try and just do it with a lot of tank defenses. Something I didn't notice in this matchup, or in both times I played this map, until I was, it was a little too late, is it's pretty valuable to have your tank with the option of standing on this city because it's just barely out of their tank range from this base. So you can just kind of stand there and stop the infantry from going for captures and the like. Just be like super annoying. So even like here, I didn't give myself the option to stand on this city, but that's okay. Uh, so the, the the way to the way that I like to leverage Rachel's day to day is to go for very small brawl like plays that I can then out repair my opponent at. So like here, I'm just gonna stop the infantry from going for this capture, kind of like I was saying you can do on this side, uh, but it's not as for most COs, I would say this is not nearly as good because the tank from base can hit you here. But as Rachel, it's not so bad, right? Uh, the Kindle comes in here, gets like a 6-7 trade or something like that. And I just go back to this city and I'll repair faster than this tank does. So I'll get back into the fight quicker and get a nice little economic edge out of that. And you repair faster for two reasons. One, you get three... HP per turn, and two, you move back to repair before they do. You'll end up getting a nice... Like, I go down 700 in value, but gain 2,000 in income efficiency, and then I'll out-tempo uh, my opponent. I was doing like a capture chain into this city, but it's still going to be a little while until we have the Kindle power and Rachel's going to be a lot better at fighting on cities uh, defensively for quite a while here. So the reason why I have this 8 health infantry standing here is it stops this full health tank from getting a strike on this city and <clears throat> the uh, only way that my opponent can kill off this infantry is using this this infantry that's you're like stopping this capture to, to smack here and then also use this tank and then the only one full health tank attack happens against me so this guy will still be fine i'll get repairs the same reason for a uh, similar reason for why i'm having this infantry go for an attack on this tank is after it goes for that strike it only has one place you kind of or two places it'll, it'll probably go to it either go stand on this city and then go for this capture or it'll go down here uh, in either case, it's going to be able to repair up the full. So it's... I mean, I'll have to pay repair costs, but it's kind of a free attack to go for. I'm just doing some more annoying tank stands on city so infantry can't go for the capture. This infantry probably should have stuck around. This reach? No, it doesn't. I get that 4-8, but of course I'm Rachel, so I get to heal up to 7. And this is where that tempo play is going to come in handy. This guy's stuck at 7 and goes for this attack. I get to heal all the way back up to 9. And then go for my swing back. This will end up giving quite a bit of charge to Kindle, which can be you know, pretty annoying to deal with. Boom. I'm deciding on how I want to go about this because I'd like to keep this tank trapped here and also kill this one off. There's a few ways to do it, but I'm going to decide to go with this. I don't want... I could try and go for, like, the tank roll. I'm like, eh, it would be really unfortunate if I don't get the kill and it kills me in retaliation. I mean, I'm not a very healthy tank. One health tank, and this was a 
fairly healthy one hit point tank. It was, uh, I think, I think it was like from seven to nine health or something like that. Was my guess was my guesstimation, so I was like, I'll just let the infantry go for that attack. It's got a much better much better odds, and it doesn't really care if it fails. I don't know if Rachel sometimes goes up to tier two. And here I'm gonna go down here and get this heal. I could stand up here, but I don't like that I'm gonna get hit with the urban blight and then be picked off easily so i'll stay down here if i get by the urban blight i'll get knocked down to five and then repair back up to eight i don't really care about being drained for 300 funds uh, so if the urban blight doesn't happen i'll be back up to full and have this mountain available either way to interrupt any captures that start going here the nice thing about playing rachel into kindle is that instead of getting hit by the power and then your repair is leaving you at nine health so all your units are injured you fully repair the urban blight so you don't lose uh that firepower from your units which can oftentimes be really annoying to have nothing but like nine health units running around You got the urban blight at the very end here. It's fine, I guess. It is. It does give a nice plus ten percent uh, to stats and interrupts two captures. But like I said, the I don't really mind the repair costs, and uh, I s still have units that were ready to go for captures that are important, like this com tower capture uh, that won't get hit by the urban blight. And I'll just stand here so that the tanks can't interrupt this. And now I don't have to deal with an urban blight delaying my comm tower. My opponent kind of ran away from their comm tower up here, which I found a little weird. This capture might be a little bit unneeded. I, I just liked how it uh, it kind of forces one of these tanks. No, 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 I don't like it all, I guess. I forgot that this tank doesn't really have any other option other than hitting this guy. I think I could have found a better spot for this infantry. One that doesn't get hit by this guy. Like, maybe on this forest is better. So that uh, I can still, like, go for these interrupts. Not great to just let that happen, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm not I'm not really afraid of a brawl happening. This tank could have gone for something else, though, I think. Because that'll give me my charge up to the super. And it's very it's a little weird that my opponent's grouping up quite so much here. If we're gonna have a little bit of a it's a little bit of a failure in a magnet. The infantry magnet does work out nicely though. And I think if the Neo tank isn't here, my opponent said that <laughs> it does work out a little bit better. But this is pretty, uh, pretty ugh, against Rachel missiles. And it's not guaranteed that I get the missile. I'm going to try at first to go for some greedy checks. I'm trying. This is an attack in order to see if I take that one hit point of damage on my tank because I give 700 charge. And I want to. I want to get away without having to go for too many bad attacks, but uh, from what I calced, it wasn't really that probable. Because what I wanted to avoid is leaving any of my tanks next to their properties. For the retaliation. This one I I end up basically needing to, to leave like this. But I'll use the artillery to, to stare at the city, so it's okay. 
And I'm just going to Neotank Chain from this base. Because I've got a Calm Tower advantage and a little bit of an economic advantage. As well as a... Uh, I feel like a pretty comfortable take advantage. So if I can just lock us into Neo Tank chains into each other, then Urban Blight will not do a ton to that. And uh, my my super or lucky last can come into play for the, the Neo Tank fights and make a big difference. At the end of my opponent's turn, I'm down a little bit in unit count, but I'm up in unit value and income, so I'm I'm feeling very good. And I'll be able to clean up a bunch of units here. Oh, and you might have noticed, I didn't mention it, but this infantry has just kind of been chilling over here on this mountain. That's just to be a really annoying pressure on my opponent, because if they ever don't build uh, a tank here or have tanks in the region, then I can just step down onto these cities. But as long as they're building the tanks and I don't have a good reason to move them away, I'll just threaten to go for the captures and uh, and just put pressure on the, the double base. But my opponent will, will resign there. Pretty much, I think, once the Rachel Supers hit, it was kind of GG. I'm not quite sure where the Neo Tank went for this attack. I think that was just to, just to use the Neo Tank. Well, I moved the Penguin off because I don't want to uh, invite all these tank attacks. Right? Because it's, it's valuable being full health and threatening these cities. I don't really want it to get attacked until my Neo Tank that I just built over here can protect it. Because right now my opponent's protecting these cities, so I'm just going to wait until they, they go elsewhere and then I'll get back to threatening it. Yeah. Rachel Super being very good. Yeah. This is high funds. Who cares about the HP repair? Really, in any of the modes, you kind of don't care about the Kindle Urban Blight repair damage. I mean, you don't seek it out. But in high funds, you can super ignore it. Yeah, you don't have to pop the CO normal power right away, not unless you see an opportunity for it. Because you, that's the other advantage to using the normal power over the super, is that you don't waste any charge by holding on to it for a while. Yeah, the, the, the extra repairs that you pay against Kindle is actually a boon against her. It's way better to pay more money repairing your units than to have 9 health units have to fight full health units. <laughs> we should have seen a different colored penguin for April Fool's Day. <laughs> GG, GG. Those are the high fun game. High funds games so far. Hope you enjoyed. Next we have yellow yellow comic commander versus Poland on Pelican Point live league tier two standard. Oh my gosh, we got Grim versus Rachel. That's not what I expected <laughs> for tier two. I guess this is a a, a double ba a, a two base map, so Rachel's. Pretty fine here. I'm playing five games at once. Back to my old ways. Or no. my old, Oh, maybe I need to add two more. My old ways was playing seven games. That's how I climbed.
But I don't have as much time as I did back then. I don't know. Does Poland really like this map? Uh, Kindle Super only counts cities in this game. That the faction commanders were unused? What do you mean? Oh, cities plus HQ. Okay. Plus the HQ. What do you mean, Yellow Comic Com <laughs> Well, I mean, Yellow Comic Commander is not even accurate anymore, right? It's Gold Comic Commander. It's pulling against to be Cobalt Ice. Red's gonna be doing well. When you start a live league, it shows the faction commander instead of the actual player. Oh, you meant name. Oh, this is their name. If that's what you're talking about. I know in live league, I think it shows the flag of the country you're fighting. Yeah, they only play yellow commissios, I assume. You played this one versus Poland Adder Mirror. Oh, that sounds like a, a tough game, Himida. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I would think Rachel is advantaged here for sure. I guess the Grim firepower will make uh, having units ready for repairs a little bit harder. See that Poland is going for the airport pretty quickly. I would definitely agree with that. We have any I'll see how the Grim player ends up playing this. Usually there's a few main strategies for Grim. Uh there's uh what's it called? I think it's spaced walling. So you'll have like the infantry up forward with the wall and then the tanks further back ready to attack the opposing tanks that attack your infantry wall but not so close that if the opponent breaks through your infantry wall, their tanks can hit your tanks. And that's to give you more vehicle on uh, vehicle first strikes. Oh, no, Humana, I did watch your game on this. Yeah, I just recognized. I just recognized these cities. I do remember that. This is the, the map that after watching your game against Poland was like, we're pulling the map from Live League because all the fighting happens in the corners. <laughs> It was just like stream down, stream over, fight, fight, fight. We'll see if the the grim game here ends up going differently. Okay, well, it seems to be fighting in the corner so far. There's a little bit weird for Poland. It does mean that. I guess since there's more tanks that can come over here, it's fine to, to, to promise this tank down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that the, the Grim tank standing here doesn't stop this from reaching. Did Grim have a way of securing the city cap? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess so. If Grim wanted to, tank goes here, hits this infantry, and the infantry stands here, and then Poland would be unable to stop the city cap. It would, it would let Poland get a uh, first strike on this tank, I guess. But considering how difficult <laughs> 
this corner city can be to capture. It might have been fine. Oh, I mean, I think this also looks fine. I mean, you don't really want to send the tank down here, go for the strike, get killed off, and then just have more infantry ready to go for the capture. So yeah, yellow comet gets this either way. That's a very spicy strike by Poland. There's no, no grim infantry up here besides this one. <laughs> okay. A little more focus on the center here for Grim. We are going to have an infantry sacrifice in order to delay this capture. I guess it's the same thing is true that Poland basically has no infantry over here. Let's see how Grim decides to go about this. We do get, I mean, I think the strike from the he does make a lot of sense. This tank barely survives at one health. We do get the kill off over here, but Poland's ready to avenge. Looks like we're just going to retreat for repairs. Although we can't. We're not going to block it off. Interesting. So this, <clears throat> this imagery is just going to move up to threaten for an interrupt on this city. Like, this 5 health tank, I think, will be pretty easy to take out. So, very weird that we didn't have the infantry just block that. Because I don't think there was enough stuff over here for Poland to, <laughs> to stop the other infantry from interrupting. Okay. I do like that Poland's coming out with these copters. The Grim copters are going to be better in this matchup than the Rachel ones, but the Rachel ones will still be fine. Yeah, I mean, you get the trap. On the, I guess it's fine because the copter comes over. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. Since the copters can reach from in just two turns from this airport, that does make this a little bit better. Although going down the tank count for a while is still... Oh, interesting. So Grim decided to move the copter more central. That seems kind of weird to me. Because this copter had way more options for places to go and help. And now it's kind of being sent backwards tempo wise instead of having this copter just go over for the tank kill. But okay. Oh, that's a very gutsy move by Poland. It is copter chained. So like this can kill this copter off, but then Poland's like, aha, I'll get you in the in the retail. Looks like Grim wasn't really interested in it anyway. Can't be. The infantry were too slow to interrupt this capture, so Poland's going to get that corner as well. And we might see more central fighting now that the corners are captured. Oh, thank you, Bree. Down by some or sometimes allowed in the high plans, but is usually banned. Yeah, Poland is hurting a bit in the unit count here. Hardly ideal. Going so aggressive with these copters against Grimm. Okay. I guess it's not super feasible for Grim to kill off this copter and then uh, like block off the attack routes with infantry. So we'll see how this works out. And of course, Poland does have the super now. So Grim does have to build magnets for that. 
right now, assuming no missile bugs are in play, right over here is where you would expect to see the uh, covering firelands. Yeah. So the missile... <gasps> oh, no, no, no. This is four. This is four. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It does land up there. For some reason, I thought this was five. Okay. Poland just backs off over here. Just gives up the the corner city. You have a knuckle duster. Going for all the infantry strikes makes sense to me. Because you want to stop these cities from getting captured if you end up losing this fight. Since we had uh, quite a few missiles land over here, losing the fight seems very possible. Although, I mean, quite a lot of damage got done there. I keep forgetting that this isn't high funds. This is standard. <laughs> okay. Looking decent down here for Poland. The uh, the copter the copter training is pretty much ruined now though. Uh, the infantry missile factors in, or all of the all of the missiles besides Sturm <laughs> care about doing their three damage. So, as long as you can do three damage to the unit, it counts as the same as it's full. Unless you're talking about the Sturm Meteor, in which case it cares about the total, the, the value of the unit as is. Um, I think the Rachel, I think the Rachel Infantry one, though, specifically says it needs, if it can do any damage to the infantry, it will target it, if I remember correctly. Or actually, I guess if it does any damage to the infantry, then it's still going to do a tiebreaker in that regard. But if the infantry is at complete minimum health, it'll be ignored. If I remember correctly. But for, for the Von Bolt missile and the... Uh, the value missile of of Rachel, they look at how much value they deal in damage, not the value of the unit. It does need to damage the infantry. It does. If an infantry gets hit, if, it, if you were like at two health on an infantry and it gets hit by the, uh, the infantry missile, then it will get set to the minimum health and it'll start getting ignored. Oh, it will. Unless they changed it. It'll get set to like 0.0001% or whatever it is. Well, you got hit hit the 1 HP infantry again. So they're not set at a healthy one. So they're at a minimum one. Anyway, here in the fight. So even even when the corner properties get captured quickly, the fighting just continues in these captures. We didn't 
I don't think we watched this this game on Wednesday. Am I thinking of the HP missile? I think it's the infantry missile I'm thinking of. I mean, I could be wrong. If you're testing it right now and it's still working. Then I'm wrong. You're still getting nuked? Okay, okay. Then I'm wrong on that. Okay. The Poland now has a decent situation. This one copter's kinda hosed. Ooh. Oh, that was a cheeky play. The anti-air is covering for the copter, but the two health copter blocks the anti-air's range to, to come in here, and two health is just strong enough that uh, <laughs> that the one health copter will not be able to get the kill. We have the double unit sacrifice to prevent this corner capture. Yeah, and it, it works. This the copters are kept alive for Grim. Wow, that's a very aggressive Poland copter uh, move in here. Poland's, I guess, getting com concerned about the comm tower falling. Does a sacrificial attack against this infantry. Now, these copters going in and like hitting a tank and then getting killed off by a copter does generate a lot of charge for Poland, which will be good for uh, for more and more nukes. Which get harder and harder to play around as you get fewer and fewer units to, to make magnets and the like with. But it's still very expensive to lose an entire cop to do that. Yeah, we watched Humida versus Poland. Okay, okay more. So the dream when you're doing magnets against Rachel is that the infantry and the HP missile will hit the, the same clump of infantry. And then your production sucks up the, the value missile. That's the dream. But it can be very hard to achieve. And right now Yellow Comet is, is committing uh, some very questionable positional plays. Which is everything's being super spread out. So it's, it's hard to defend different spots in order to avoid getting hit with a bunch of nukes. But it's kind of okay for Yellow Comet to do this because they are up 3k in income. So every turn that there isn't fighting happening, they are getting a little bit stronger. And they're also ahead in, in unit count. Ooh. I think they might have run out of time there. They're covering fire. They do have an HP and an infantry missile hit here, and then the value one hits over here. Ideally, the value one would hit the uh, you call it the production, so you don't have frontline units taking damage. Okay. This copter. This is a little bit of a weird play from Poland. So the idea is like, oh, the copter's trapped. It's going to get killed off by the anti-air. But it's given the opportunity to get an equal trade with an opposing copter. So it's not a great trap. It's like an equal value trap. Which is not usually the, uh, the idea there. 
I mean, I guess this this copter did live. So it's it's not quite an equal value trap. Yeah, that was a weird play by Grim. Might have just missed that the anti air can come in and hit from that missile platform. Bunch of first strikes against the yellow comet commander here. He does have the power now. But this is going to start getting to the point where it'll be very difficult for yellow comet to continue to play around these nukes. Because these infantry are kind of going to be needed for this fighting. Yeah. Oof. Yep. At this point, Poland is able to do a lot more bullying plays. Just charge in here and you get stuck in this situation where if you run in here with all these uh, Grim units and go for the attacks here, that's going to give Poland the super. And all of your units have to be clumped up to go for these attacks. And definitely Yellow Comet Commander is running low on time. We're gonna go for the Knuckle Duster. For some strikes. Unable to stop the corner city from falling. We're gonna have the infantry and HP missile hit here. Probably. I mean, Poland will have the opportunity to potentially um, attack any infantry, but it's very difficult to do enough damage to move it elsewhere. If you're Poland here, you probably kill off these units that are standing on the front lines so that the, they don't uh, attract the nukes. But I guess the nukes weren't coming over there anyway, so it doesn't matter. They hit down here instead. And Poland starts going for a nice comm tower advantage. Picks off these units. And now almost all of Grimm's units are injured from the nukes. Which will make them much less effective. You get a Knuckle Duster. Attacking on this turn is pretty valuable because all of these attacks don't generate any charge for Poland. And it's really the nukes that are going to end up sealing the day. But here we go. We got the double comm tower advantage now. So Grim still got plus 30% attack, but now Rachel's got plus 20% attack, so Grim's only up 10% attack for, for minus 2% defense. That's not... <laughs> or 20% uh, defense. That's not a great trade. So you would expect Rachel to start winning these brawls pretty effectively, especially once more nukes start coming down. All these injured units getting picked off. There's not a healthy infantry in sight, and now the infantry count is also dwindling a lot. I don't quite know how Grim would be able to make it back into this game at this point. It's kind of like fighting a global damage CO. Things just start looking very grim, as Humida made the pun for. Yeah, and we're approaching the next super. Grim still has a little bit of an income lead. But it's going to be harder and harder to maintain here. Some nice tank attacks. But again, like you can see, in order to attack into Poland's army, uh, Grim's own army kind of has to group up a, quite a fair bit. And then it'll just kind of get nuked into oblivion. And also, you can see it gets harder and harder to redirect that infantry <laughs> fire to somewhere that doesn't matter. Although, both the HP and the infantry one did hit down here, which is pretty impressive. But now, Grim just has no healthy infantry on the entire map, on base light, and no less. So you'll never really see a Grim capture in the future here. We're almost down to just one... One Grim Infantry. Okay, we Missile Recon. That's probably Resign. Oh, it's not Resign yet. Might have run out of time before the Resign. But if uh, if Poland kills off all of the infantry, 
the infantry missile is going to land in the top left corner. That's something to keep in mind, especially on this map. That could actually end up mattering. There could be units up there that we're not expecting to get hit with an infantry, an infantry nuke. But I assume this is just going to be a delete into resign. No. <laughs> okay, offer up the missile for a death by route and GG. Yeah, you do need to be able to retreat as Grim. Yeah. Who's guesting on the next podcast? It has not been determined yet, but there's a few people we're looking at. GG. Next, we've got Laurencia 1997 versus Days of Plague. Sasha Mirror. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> this is one of my least favorite mirrors to play. Alpha Strike means a lot of first strikes. It's like army or front wide first strikes, stuff like that. One of your favorite mirrors? Content, get out of here. Get out. <laughs> this is no one's favorite mirror. You you will never get war bonds off in this matchup. This is <laughs> this is one so uh, Sasha tries to chain lock the other Sasha out of powers and enjoys plus ten plus ten stats. Play Sasha Mir on Celeste is real fun. Maybe it is, maybe it is. I've never enjoyed the mirror. I don't know, I don't think I've ever lost at the mirror, but I, I, I've never enjoyed it. But here we go. Sasha versus Sasha. So you both get uh, extra income, 100 extra income per income generating property. Not even Sasha gets to benefit from labs or comm towers generating income or anything like that. And, uh, her normal power, when you use it, it drains your opponent's charge bar, so they, they can both drain each other's charge bars in the mirror. How fun is that? And then the super, which you will probably never see in the mirror, at least not very successfully, is uh, War Bonds, which, if I remember correctly, it gives you value equal to 50% of the damage you deal. Wait, was there a base delay? No. Oh, there is. Wow, Days of Plague. Wow. That is... Weird. Okay, so complete the city rather than stepping onto this base. I mean, Days of Plague is going to have to do something immediately with that money to make that worth it. Because for, for anyone that doesn't know, every turn you delay a base, you're also delaying, uh, well, one infantry. So you go down one in infantry count. And you also delay any of the captures that that base is responsible for, which is like four-ish, I'll say. 
and the base capture itself. So you get this, you get this earlier, which I'll say will cancel out. We'll cancel out getting the, the base later. So you go down 4,000. I guess 4,400 because you're Sasha. By getting these slower, you also slow down all of the tempo that's coming out of this base. So that, that definitely relieves a lot of pressure on Lawrence. So you've got to get some really big benefits out of uh, a base skip there. Because you go down in unit count, you go down in income in the long term to get like a faster immediate income. But as we can see, last turn there wasn't enough extra money to do anything. And this turn there's money left over. So... It's not great. Maybe it's a little bit better because this city, you do get to keep it a little bit longer. So maybe like another city you get captured over here. Maybe you can like offset another one of these cities economically. But it's still rough. Would not, would not recommend. It does look like it's going to result in maybe faster central captures. Which is an interesting thing to go for. Again, we have more than 1,100 funds left over, so no real benefit to that uh, buys-wise so far. Um, so it's kind of weird to go for, like, uh, if, if this was in order to get central captures faster, because... For the most part, these this kind of gets handshaked all the time. It's, it's usually an overextension to try and deny these captures. Maybe this one you can deny, but it can be rough because the copters can come into this fight really quickly. We have the anti-air and tank already primed for action. Okay, we, as you can see, the tank can cover this capture right away, which is why this one usually uh, always gets captured. It's very expensive to interrupt this. Because you'll end up fighting in base range and they get to attack you from a city. I mean, that's pretty nasty. But it does look like Days of Plague is going to try and just deny this city. We'll see how that goes. Days of Plague does also have the comm tower earlier than Lawrence. And there's a whole bunch of timings around when you capture the comm tower. Because comm towers give you plus 10% firepower for all your units, which is very nice. But they don't give you any income. So if you don't use that plus 10% firepower, then you might as well have captured the city instead and got some money out of it. So like, there we go. We use some of that Firepower right there. Also got some of it on the uh, retaliations here. We have some blocking going on so that, like, uh, Lawrence would love to use tank, tank, infantry, or whatever. I guess tank, tank probably kills tank on force without comm tower. I don't remember. Uh, so that the anti air could then kill out this copter, but the copter is blocking this tank from getting the strike over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. It's always, as I was saying, mighty dangerous to try and deny this capture. Especially if it's costing you uh, captures elsewhere on the map. But... If everything else on the map ends up going even, then this will be a very slight economic lead. Yeah, you, well, usually when there's brawling in the center on this map, there's artillery backing stuff up. Which is not the case this time. Uh, and the things you tend to go for is blocking off these choke points and then having artillery stare at the units. Okay, Days of Plague is starting to retreat. 
Like, this attack is pretty much fine for Days of Plague. Went down one tank health, not the worst thing. And uh, is going to be able to stop these infantry from going for these captures. Although there's quite a few infantry over here for Lawrence that can just kind of walk over and threaten this capture. Although, ideally what they want to do is just walk down here and go for all these captures, because this base is kind of responsible for defending over here and also submitting units straight into the middle. So it can be able to be overloaded here. This tank does get surrounded. Very good trap by Days of Plague. Kind of set up to get hit by a mech and a tank that can then heal on the city, which is very good. Okay, we're going to start moving in here. The medium tank does not... Uh, oh, never mind. I was going to say the medium tank doesn't cover this fight because it doesn't reach this city. But Lawrence actually moved onto the forest. Was there not an option to... Is this tank... I guess this tank is considering attacking here. Well, I would have expected this tank to attack from the plains. Okay, we do have the market crash. You can see it drains the opposing Sasha of all of its funds. Of all of their funds. This is still mighty weird to me. I would have expected this tank to attack from the plains because then you give yourself a nice full health tank in the woods with the uh, plus 10% uh, attack and defense to be the one that's in range of the medium tank so it gets to survive and potentially just go back and repair and you don't go down in unit count. That's okay. Yeah, down goes that tank. A little bit unfortunate there, but it's okay. And then you'll see the units are now going to start fighting in the range of this medium tank, which will help in this fight quite a bit. And we didn't have a single infantry go back for this capture, which is a little, a little odd. But you can see we do have the nice infantry pressure coming in over here and how this base is kind of getting overloaded. The medium tank can't go over here. It doesn't really want to go over here and fight infantry anyway, but uh, it has to go up here and the infantry fights over here get delayed for any reinforcements in the future. Yeah, I would have expected that... I mean, this is probably fine. The infantry can just kill off the tank. Oh, it doesn't get the kill. Well, I would have expected this tank to uh, wait to see how this plays out, and then it can move down to the city to repair and finish off this tank. I mean, this is very annoying. Have the tank survive. It's not even trapped anymore. I mean, it can't, it can't return home, but... Uh, it can move itself into a place that's kind of irritating to have to send a unit to go and take it out. Yeah, both of these copters get taken out. And anti-air falls too, so that makes this copter really not want to come up here because the... Uh... Well, maybe. Wait, one, two... No, there's a, if, well, I guess you can maybe try it. Uh, how would you do it? No. I was thinking maybe you can have the medium tank hit over here and then the tank hit here. But I think it doesn't quite work out. But in, in either case, you can see how this puts a lot of pressure on this base. It has to it's trying to reinforce on two different fronts, and that's just not something that's very easy to do. You just have a huge wave of infantry fighting a small infantry defend defending force. Hardly ideal. We have the Days of Plague market crash. So Days of Plague now has the position of having basically a full charge. So we can get 
two or three or maybe even four uh, market crashes in a row to try and just lock out the opposing Sonya from getting powers. Now it is, it is, of course, pretty dangerous for for Lawrence to keep fighting over here. It is nice that it's like uh, overloading this base, but at the same time, you are fighting within base and airport range, essentially. So it'll become very expensive to, to keep it up. And indeed, Lawrence is like, I'm getting out of here. for a bunch of captures over here. You get the artillery. Usually you have the artillery a little bit faster on these fronts because you can build up so many infantry attacking. Did I say Sonya? <laughs> if I said Sonya, my bad. I was being reminded of the fact that I played against uh, Comp Buy on this map where uh, he was Adder, I think, and I played as Sonya in Standard. Good times. Okay. Ooh, you have a nice march out over here. I mean, the medium tank is definitely a threat. I'm kind of surprised the neo tank got built over here. Because if you build it here, I mean, it's pretty clear that the medium tank wants to not be where the neo tank is. So. I agree with Days of Plague's move here. Lawrence would love to get the normal power so as to drain Days of Plague of all of this charge. Well, that wasn't really worth it, I guess. I mean, it's still worth it because otherwise Days of Plague just wipes your, your charge. But Lawrence didn't have enough cash on hand to, to drain it all. Like, I don't know if that was worth sending this tank in to hit this anti-air in order to do, to do that, because the medium tank still gets a nice swing over here. And usually I do say you don't really want to send an anti-air to trade for copters like this. Uh... But that's usually when talking, you have them meeting in the middle of the map. Over here, it's a lot better because the tempo is now in the anti-air's favor. And the uh, reinforcing copters aren't really on the way. So once all these copters are taken out, there won't be any anything over here left to have to build anti-air and deal with. Oh, did Lawrence build a copter before using it? Oh, no. Okay. There is an anti-air over here for Lawrence. But pretty soon, the, the copter swarm is going to be able to fend off this, this push. And unfortunately for this Neotank... It can get fought off in these choke points with artillery pretty easily. Okay. The dates of play getting some nice threats on these captures. You have the Neo tank has entered the scene. I'm um, similarly there isn't great anti-air for days of plague over here, so the copter swarms will be pretty good so yeah the, in this like it was fine of days of plague to send in the anti-air to kill off a copter it's a little less fine for lawrence to do it if the idea is to stick around in this fight for a long time if the idea is to just get the nice charge advantage be like i kill your copter i get the charge from that you don't get the charge of it charge from it then that's fine But like it's it's a lot harder for Lawrence to replace this anti-air than it is for Days of Plague to replace that copter. 
And it means that if Lawrence ever wants to retreat over here, there'll no longer be that anti-Earth defending off the copters. I do get the market crash. That's probably a little bit of a mistake. I don't know if you needed it yet to deal with uh, the anti because that does give a fair bit of charge. But I do like saving the infantry attacks until after the uh, plus 10, plus 10 stats. That's pretty nice. Ooh. Got the recons over here. This is very dangerous for... I guess the copter count isn't quite strong enough that the copter can stand here to block off the land units and then also come over, have one come over here and attack the artillery that's that's trying to lock down the HQ. Okay, your tank gets the smack down over there. We're going to start losing these cities for, uh, for Lawrence, but I mean, Days of Plague is also looking like they're going to start losing some. That was probably not a great copter strike. Ooh, we got a nice infantry block. The Lawrence has secured this tile, which is very important, so that <laughs> your opponent can't just block your units and then start capturing the HQ. Yeah, Lawrence was indeed safe. It would have been pretty nasty if Days of Plague was able to get the normal power and drain Lawrence of all that charge, but now Lawrence is going to be able to get probably two turns in a row draining these a place charge it's pretty good we're gonna have just all of these cities trade which I would have expected Lawrence to have a very large advantage in that regard just because of how <laughs> many infantry were outnumbering days of plagues down here for so long but days of plague got the job done is also potentially going to get this city in the long run so maybe getting this city first for the slight tempo advantage in the, in the center paid off in the very 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 long run okay do you have an infantry built from days of plague so these cities are about to be threatened to uh and capture and this is what I was talking about about why it's not great to have your anti-air go in there and trade with a copter within the airport range like now the army is trying to retreat and at this range you, you have a much easier time having your anti-air kill off copters and then block for it but it's just not available and so the, the army is getting harassed as it's retreating and it's missing just a single anti-air days of plague is actually like down in unit value ish a tiny bit but way up in unit count uh, six of that is infantry though the rest is artillery it looks like okay here's the market crash we're gonna go after the anti-air knock it down to three Surprised there wasn't an anti-air built for days of plague on this front. Is could have afforded to not build an infantry and instead an anti-air. And there's a lot of copters over here. Okay, that does interrupt this capture. My corner is falling. Oh, I didn't realize that Lawrence didn't actually have this yet. So days of plague had a little bit of an economic. Edge. Actually, this is a has a very nice economic edge. Up by three cities? Huh. I guess that's because of owning both corners and this one being denied for so long. Okay. It's a little weird of Days of Plague to to attack like this. I mean, going after the medium tank and stuff, that makes sense, but... The 
helicopters are going to be very happy. They're going to feast over here. It'll help Lawrence make up for a lot of this unit count. Nom nom nom. Now there is a fighter built by Days of Plague. Which will be able to harass a lot of these copters, especially around these, uh... These, like, ocean and shoal tiles. The fighter also has one other hidden ability on this map. And that is, it can stand on these choke points and be unable to die. So it can just be a complete wall. Antires do not one-shot them. And they'll have only... Usually they'll have only, like, one tile available to be attacked from. How are they damage racing backwards? <laughs> that's that's because of not having the proper anti ready for the retreats. That's what's happening. Okay. So Lawrence's plan here is make sure the copters only go for attacks in a space that the anti air covers them try and nullify the fighter's powers. Is Blake does get this city back. Maintains, a, in this case, a five property advantage. It's pretty ridiculous. Here's a place got the money. So yeah, you can see all the copters. They're running and hiding and making sure they're always inside of the range of an anti-air. Got the market crash. Interrupt the capture. <laughs> you always gotta be really careful when you go for moves like this. Like... The entire would love to get onto this city and hit that fighter. But uh, I, I think with that extra plus 10 plus 10 stats, there's no way Lawrence can get through there. Looks like Days of Plague has lost that entire uh, unit count lead. Which is pretty unfortunate. There he gets to hit the anti-air. Fighter hits the copter. Neotank does go down. We have a a careful attempt at walling here. I think <laughs> there's no way this holds, but it's probably a choice for Lawrence as to whether or not to attack after the fighter or to attack down here might be what's going on there. We'll see how that all how that all plays out. It's definitely a lot of grouping. Lawrence would love to be stern with a meteor right now. Or von Bolt. Or Rachel. We're gonna come in here. <laughs> Market crash. We're not attacking fighter. Well, I, I would have expected the market crash to happen after attacking the fighter. Because that's a lot of charge. And if you don't know, if you market crash a Sasha who has her power up you'll still drain all of the reserved charge. And Lawrence has... I guess Lawrence doesn't have that much reserved charge. So it's okay. Okay. Do a little bit of attacking down here. Uh, the fighter's at two. It's not useless, though. It can still block everything except for anti-air. And it can it can pester copters, for sure. There 
go. It's pestering some copters. Yeah, you'll see that Lawrence will have no charge at the start of their turn here. Right, that big old brawl. There, no charge. We go for a bunch of sacrifices. I'm not sure if the sacrifice. Uh, I'll, I'll assume that the sacrifice was needed there. <laughs> Breakthrough. Hit the artillery. Anti-air count is again really low. Days of Plague does recognize this. Uh, and there's a lot on the way. The fighter doesn't get hit. Gives some nice pressure in the center at the same time by Lawrence, who's still down two cities. And by two cities, I mean one city, because now they're all owned. So this, this city right here. Fighter will go for a nice little ping. Free damage. Anti-air goes in for the attack, finishes off that tank. There are two Neo tanks coming in for Lawrence, which will be pretty nasty to deal with for sure. To the restart moving out into the center. Usually this is more of what you would have expected than the initial push. It's just a bunch of artillery and infantry. Oh, down goes the fighter. Rest in peace. I think the Neo Tank doesn't have a target, which is a little unfortunate for sure. But I can still move on over here. The infantry is healing up. There's only one over here, but uh, if he heals up to 10, it can start capturing these. There isn't any artillery staring at this property or this one, so there is potential that Days of Play can continue getting more of these in the future. Slight front shift into the middle here. Yeah, I guess you might as well attack that anti-air. Infantry have really bad damage values against anti-airs, but it's not like that infantry had much better prospects. I mean, you could try and retreat onto this forest and be like, there's nothing that really wants to hit me, and then have the idea of on the next turn getting into the corner, which is just really annoying to deal with. But well, it would probably get killed off anyway. Okay. There's that infantry. Proving its value. The double Neo tank staring down one Neo tank. That copter advantage. Things are looking very good for Lawrence. Still down a city, but I mean 24k to 26k. For the most part, it's uh it's even. Okay, we do have to break through. Get to hit both of these artillery. It was a little weird that they actually went up quite so far. It will delay the, the city captures a bit, I guess. The anti will get to hit the copter of its choice, which is definitely going to be this one. Try and survive afterwards. Ideally, you get your, an your anti-air doesn't die from the strike. We have a mega tank from Days of Plague. Well, that is very quick to reinforce on this front for sure. We're finally back to being even in income. That's a very spicy uh, attack from the Neo tank. It attacked into artillery range and Neo tank range. It does take out an anti-air so we might see a huge copter swing i mean there's another anti-air and two copters so it's not like it's a free attack in ah, the anti-air just moves into the i guess it doesn't move into this artillery range it's right next to it yeah that's fine this guy's just overloaded oh when it gets hit that does that does help the situation a lot. Okay, so the mega tank is very quick to reinforce 
on this front. But of course, it is a very big investment to reduce it. And it's going to run into the problem of everything just ran, runs away. I think it doesn't even attack over here. It has to go into the center. Um, yeah. And it, it, it can run into the problem of costing 28k and only fighting infantry would be very bad value-wise. You just hate Sasha with a passion. It does mean that these Neo tanks don't really want to go into its range. Which is something. That was a little bit weird of a copter swing for sure. That might have been a Hail Mary from Days of Plague to try and get power or something. No, no, no. It wasn't even close. Lawrence goes for some sacrifices, gets the normal power. So attack through here. Mega Tank can't step here, but it can kill off this anti air. It's going to run into the, the problem of being a Mega Tank against uh, low HP units soon. So mega Tanks only have three shots. And those three shots are until it uses its machine gun. It can machine gun down infantry all day long. But uh, it's those three shots that deal damage, real damage to vehicles. So a problem you can run into is say the Mega Tank moves here onto the shoal. And it one shots his anti-air. That's a great kill. Uh, then there's a three health anti-air. That comes in, waste and ammo. Six health tank can come in, waste and ammo. And then the me the Mega Tank has no ammo. And the two Neo Tanks just kill it. Without any uh, retaliation. Well, the machine gun retaliates, but that's basically nothing. So it's just something you gotta gotta keep in mind. And it looks like Days of Plague is just gonna try and occupy this tile so you can't get the double Neo Tank swing on it. You think he is trapped? Another Mega. Yeah, okay. Days of Plague just resigns there. Lawrence was about to get the income lead for the first time. <laughs> Disabling others' powers is the most boring mechanic. I think it's a lot better when it's not a Sasha mirror. Uh, I think the Mega Tank buys were definitely a little questionable, but Lauren started to just kind of snowball that with snowball that with standing armies, so getting some really nice attack uh, harassments on the retreating units. It's more fun in the other matchups when it's like Sasha versus Von Bolt and it's Sasha versus Hawk because it it uh, puts a lot more focus on charge management for both players I personally personally I think Sturm Mirror is the first the best mirror but that's just me. We'll do one more game. Zavadu. I don't like Sonya Mirror. Sonya Mirrors do have some... Some merit. Yeah, Sasha vs. Javier is also very nice. Andy Gaming. Grim Mirror. Sammy Mirror with exposed HQs. <laughs> Yeah, shoot, that shouldn't be happening, but sometimes it does. It used to be so much worse. It used to be the algorithm, the map, the, the game creation algorithm tried to even out 
the number of games played per map in Global League based on like the map's game played count. So whenever a new map not not like a new not like a, a map got rotated back in, but a new map was submitted, all of your games, all of them would be on that map as the algorithm's like, it's gotta catch up. Stalingrad's got like 30,000 games played on it or whatever. This map has zero. <laughs> but it, it's not quite so bad anymore. Yeah, it's not as aggressive as it was. It was absolutely ridiculous. You'd be like, I'm playing 25 games all on the exact same map. It still has it? Okay, okay. Now, Fei Shu... Uh, Fei Shui? Fei Shui? I don't remember how to say it. Uh, that's not a new map. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of it either, Shoop. Good luck. That's the map where Reimer played Lash into Maya Von Bolt. Fun times. Fun times. Makes so too much time. I like this map because I have a transport copter first base skip build. Because this base is responsible for so little. He gets covered by both these other bases and captures. Fog benefits a lot from the big maps because it lets you do a lot of front switching shenanigans. But okay, here we go. We got Davidu playing Andy in the top right against John playing Drake in the bottom left. Neither player is going for my airport first uh, opening, which is fine. You don't have to do it. Okay, they're both going for early recons, though, so we'll see what they get done. I wasn't... Uh, when I was looking at the map and playing the map, I wasn't too impressed with uh, the early recons. Although I did do it a few times when playing, like, Max and stuff and just spamming out a bunch of recons and trying to hit everywhere. Because it can be it can be difficult to cover everything, so you'll, you'll find some some purchase somewhere. But you can see the recons have to spend a really long time traveling, uh, and it, it it doesn't take that long for a tank to to cover these attack uh, options for the recon. Fortunately for that video, there isn't a tank yet, but it's still pretty dangerous to go for an attack over here. So we'll see if the recon even does it. If the recon doesn't get any harassment, then it's pretty much just going to be seeing what you would expect to already be there. So it's it's like it's giving you vision, but it's not useful vision. So you might as well just build something else and either have like an infantry further forward right now going for captures or having uh, transport units or something. Yeah, like this is not a very useful recon. This recon does have a nice benefit of Davidu put an infantry next to a forest, so it has a nice uh, terrain to attack from. It almost can't make it into the forest, but the comm tower helps it. I do kind of like Drake's going for early transport copters because it, it gives them a use out of their airport that doesn't really care about their minus two attack power. Whether or not you go back for, backwards for this capture right away can be pretty iffy to me because I think making it to these island properties right away is very beneficial. So kind of rushing those down and maybe build another transport copter later on to go for this capture because it's like the safest capture in the whole world. <laughs> There's no way your opponent's going to be able to interrupt this capture or beat you to it. Uh, but that can happen with these islands, and it's very bad. If their transport copter drops off the infantry here, 
and then you show up in your transport copter, you cannot drop off your infantry to interrupt. Because you can either stand here or here to drop off onto the city, or you stand on the city to drop off onto these shoals. Uh, and so if the infantry is sitting here on the city, you just can't do anything about it. And so showing up late is really bad. Okay, some nice harassment from the Drake Recon. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just going to be marching forward. Yeah. yeah, this Recon is currently just kind of standing on yeah. the comm tower. It might as well not be here. He goes for that strike, but ends up striking inside tank range, and then it gets taken out, and you're like, oh my gosh, why did I... Why did I do that? Uh, it's a pain that we have all felt, I'm sure. Looks like the transport copter actually just dropped off down here and then came back. Which is a little weird. One of the things you'll often see done is the transport copter will, like, go here. And then they'll boost an infantry to this this tile. And then they can start moving on down with its life. Uh, because from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can drop off. But from the from the airport, you're one tile out. Unless you're like Sammy or Sensei. Yeah. So now it or you could go there and boost onto your airport, but I, I don't usually recommend that because then you can't build from your airport. Yeah. That's a little weird with the how that transport copter got used. I thought it was coming down here to go for these corners, which I would recommend. Yeah. Okay, we kind of backs off. Things are looking peachy for Drake right now. Made it to these islands. There's nothing really coming over to contest them right now. Hopefully this transport copter does not head off into this direction. That would be really bad. Okay, the artillery in the woods is pretty classic. Uh, usually you try and occupy like this this road because the opponent can, can stand here, interrupt your capture, and then your artillery can't do anything about it. But if they don't know you have an artillery in there, then they probably won't do that. This recon goes down too, so things are looking very good for John. And for the matchup, in Fog and Standard, Drake and Andy are pretty much even. They have some interesting games of chicken with their normal and superpowers. If it's high funds, then Andy just kind of crushes Drake because you can just heal up all of the damage so easily. Uh, you could use a black boat to capture the islands, but it's a lot slower than going with a transport copter. Like this, this harbor comes on really slowly, uh, and you don't get this one until either you get this one already or the transport copter and then the route you have to take you have to go like up and around and then down but in the uh in the later stages of the game it can become much more viable to use black boots although they'll also have um some trouble with fuel so if you're able to capture this harbor then it can be a lot better Like, if John builds a black boat now, then you're talking very quick uh, use of infantry hopping in here, but you have to, like, weaken this front immediately to do it and stuff like that. Uh, and you become very sad if you build a black boat and your opponent's already on these islands like this. It's the same problem that the transport copter has, where you can't kick them off. Whoa, that would do rushing on in here. Okay, goes for some attacks. The recon's in danger. It's not covered by an artillery, which is... This, this artillery replacement is really weird to me. It's not really guarding the front lines. It's like guarding this tank. 
I'd prefer if it was at least guarding the capture, because that's something that's pretty much guaranteed to be attacked. So Drake uh, in this matchup is oftentimes looking for using the normal power or the super in in opportunities to get kills on Andy's units. In other matchups, you'll often see Drake just kind of pop the super whenever it's available because the damage will stick. But that's not true for Andy. Yeah, this is where having the artillery in this position is a little awkward. I guess it can shoot an infantry. This falls back. That's fine. It's a little bit better now. It's guarding like this line. Okay, we have the interrupt on the comm tower, which can definitely be dicey. We'll see how Drake goes about this turn. So if Andy uses the, uh, oh, there wasn't a join on this comm tower, so it's definitely getting interrupted. Um, so sometimes Andy will just uh, be able to use the super before before Drake uses a power. And as long as Andy does enough damage with that super, it's totally cool. Like you get hit by the Drake super in response and then the damage sticks for a while. But as long as you did like a ton of damage, then that's totally fine. We're gonna zoom out in here, hit that tank, hit the artillery. Copter's gonna get hit. There's a lot of tanks down here for, for Drake. Some good hits. Now goes the copter. So like the mistake that Drake could make here, which I assume we're not gonna see is to, to pop a power at the end of the turn against Andy. Okay, so we are going to have the hyper upgrade. But Andy's using the super. This is for a big swing turn. So obviously, it has to do quite a bit. Otherwise, the damage will stick. And Davidu just resigns mid-attack. That's pretty surprising. I guess just kind of realize that this is going to be not a great fight on the other side and that the, the Drake super in response is going to be really bad. Which is definitely true. But that's a very early... It's very rare to resign mid super turn. It is down... Yeah, 5k income is rough. I think the the T copter being uh, oh, I guess we have double T copter. It was a little slow for these ones. It did that. It did that like go forward, go back, go over here, go over there. It's a lot slower. And then the, the recon opener worked out a lot better for John for sure. Now tanked. Well, you can, you can tell when you're down in income if you say, like, well, I assume that all of the cities I don't see my opponent has. You just count it up manually. But GG. Well played. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Sounds tedious. It's a little tedious. You get really fast at it. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed. We'll have a stream on Monday, ideally. And then the next the next podcast uh, is happening next month. And we'll see uh, we'll see which guest we get and all that stuff. Hope everyone had a good time. Thanks for watching. Here is your apple for the night. Enjoy, enjoy. Have a good one. What? It's Go Seven King of
the penguins, of all the penguins he is king. It's go seven king of the penguins, being king of the penguins, that's